In this video, we are going to see reverse bias breakdown of PN junction diode. If you take a PN junction diode, current flowing through it, ID, is given by this equation, where it is a function of potential applied across the PN junction. If you plot this equation by taking current in Y axis and VD on X axis, this is how it looks. When VD is positive, current flows in the direction of assumption ID and we call this as forward bias because it allows current to flow through the PN junction diode and when VD is negative, the current flows in the opposite direction and that too, the amount of current that flows is I0 which is a very small value, we can almost neglect this value which means we can say that the diode doesn't allow the current to flow through it when it is reverse biased, when VD is negative. And this diode current equation tells us that in reverse bias, how much our voltage we apply, the current is going to be I0, which is negligible, and it is independent of the voltage that we apply. Which means that how much our voltage we apply in reverse bias, a diode is not going to conduct current, which means it's not going to allow current to flow through it. But in practice, when we say how much our voltage, what if we apply thousands of volts? Doesn't the PN junction diode allow current to flow through it? Of course, in practice, when we apply certain critical voltage, the diode starts conducting current even in reverse bias. And the way it does is like this. The current steeply increases when reverse bias voltage reaches a critical voltage which we call as VBR. We are calling this as breakdown voltage. That's why we call this BR representing breakdown V voltage. And this particular phenomenon is not captured by this diode current equation. And this graph tells us that if we keep increasing the reverse bias voltage across the diode, the diode doesn't conduct current, which means it doesn't allow the current to flow through it. But then when we keep on increasing the reverse bias voltage, at some point the diode breaks down and allows the current to flow through it. In this video, we will see why this breakdown happens and what are the different mechanisms that make this happen. Reverse breakdown can occur because of two mechanisms. One, Zener effect, and two, avalanche effect. If breakdown happens because of Zener effect, we call that breakdown as Zener breakdown. It happens at low voltages, and usually it is up to a few volts and if the breakdown happens because of avalanche effect, we call that breakdown as avalanche breakdown. And usually avalanche breakdown occurs at high voltages. Starting from a few volts to thousands of volts. So let us start with Zener effect or Zener breakdown. And Zener breakdown happens in PN junctions which are heavily doped. When we say a PN junction is heavily doped, what we meant is the doping concentration on P side and doping concentration on N side are high. As a result, the depletion width would be small. For reference, let me write the expression for depletion width in a abrupt PN junction case, which is given by W is equal to 2 epsilon naught epsilon R VBI minus VD over Q times 1 by NA plus 1 by ND, whole power half. And from this we can see if NA and ND are high, this term would be a very small quantity. And this multiplying this quantity, overall the depletion width would be a small value. So now let me draw the energy band diagram for the PN junction which is highly doped where the depletion width is small. And that too under reverse bias because we are talking about breakdowns in reverse bias. This is how the energy band diagram would look like. This is on P side and this is on N side. This is Fermi energy level on N side and this is Fermi energy level on P side. And the bend of the band would be equal to Q times VBI, the built-in potential, minus the potential applied across the diode. And of course, VD is a negative value because we are talking about reverse bias in this case. As VD is negative in reverse bias, VBI minus VD would be greater than VBI. So if you talk in terms of the Fermi energy levels, the difference between these two Fermi energy levels would be equal to 
magnitude of q times the applied potential vd and as we have said that this is for a highly doped diode so we should be calling this p plus and this is n plus and the depletion width w is very small in this case now if it was a normal reverse bias where let's say there is no breakdown then the minor to carry electrons on p side would be pulled by the electric field towards the n side and similarly the minority carriers on n side which are holes would have been pulled by this electric field onto the p side and because the electric field doesn't have control on how many holes and how many electrons flow in the current was not depending on the applied potential which was i not which was called the reverse saturation current but now in this case this phenomenon doesn't happen because on p side there are a lot of valence electrons present and at the same time on n side in the conduction band there are a lot of vacant states present because of this what happens is these valence electrons are seeing lot of empty states but they are separated by a very thin depletion layer so you can imagine what happens is this electron would go through this depletion region and fill the empty state there officially if it had to go it would have actually gone to conduction band and then went but in this case it doesn't do because the depletion width is very small and this phenomenon is actually called tunneling and tunneling is a phenomenon that happens when there are a lot of electrons are separated from lot of empty states by a very thin barrier then the electrons would find themselves at the other side so that's the reason we started with an assumption that this happens only in heavily doped diodes because the depletion width would be very small and this phenomenon can be explained in another way as because the depletion width is very small the electric field in the depletion width would be very high at the applied potential difference across the pn junction because the electric field is so high these electrons in the valence band are nothing but the electrons which are in the covalent bond formation this electric field which is very high is capable of actually rupturing the bonds and pulling these electrons on to the other side where the energy states are empty so this is another way of explaining zener effect so if you see here the difference between this efp and efn is actually q times vd you can see the difference is not really very high for this tunneling to happen so as a result we can say for low voltages in few volts this kind of phenomenon can happen where a flood of electrons can actually go through the pn junction even in reverse bias as a result you can see a sudden increase of current flow in the iv characteristics in the reverse bias in a lightly doped pn junction diode the depletion width would be high as a result the electron tunneling that we talked about would be negligible so basically in a lightly doped diodes zener effect wouldn't happen so in those situations we have a different mechanism that happens which is called the avalanche effect or avalanche breakdown so as we are saying lightly doped diode which means na and nd would be small as a result this whole quantity would be high so resultant the depletion width would be high so let me draw the energy band diagram for a scenario where the doping concentration is less as a result depletion width is high and at the same time we are applying reverse bias this is how it looks where this is p side and this is n side and this is fermi energy level on n side and this is fermi energy level on p side and the total band band would be q times vbi minus vd as we are considering reverse bias vd would be negative so vbi minus vd would be greater than vbi and similarly if you see the separation between these two energy levels efp and efn this value would be equal to q times vd magnitude and clearly in this case we can see that the depletion width is pretty large as a result the tunneling phenomenon can be neglected and electric field would be directed from n side to p side inside the depletion region and as usual we know that there are minority carriers on p side which are electrons once this electron steps into this depletion region electric field the electron gets accelerated because of the electric field present and as the electron is accelerated it can gain enough kinetic energy 
as it is traveling in the depletion region it can actually hit some of the atoms in the crystal lattice and can basically ionize the atom by releasing an electron from valence band to conduction band which means literally it is going to break some covalent bonds to generate electron hole pairs as it is going through the depletion region let me represent here as this electron is traveling gaining kinetic energy let's say it encounters and hits an atom and breaks the covalent bond of it given the condition this electron actually gains that much energy so that it can give that energy for breaking the bond so that it loses the energy and it gives rise to a electron hole pair we'll have the same electron that started its energy reduced because it generated electron hole pairs by impacting the atom in the crystal which became ion and another electron which it actually generated from the valence band so we have another electron here and at the same time we have a hole in the valence band now there are two electrons which would again be pulled by the electric field in this direction both of them and if both of them gain enough energy to impact two other atoms in the depletion region to make them ions then basically it would result in two electron hole pairs generation and these two electrons would have lost energy while giving them to generate the electron hole pairs then we would have four electrons because two of them are generated because of the impact ionization and again if the depletion width is as we assumed large still they can travel in the depletion region by gaining energy from the electric field they can again generate few electron hole pairs and this process continues as a result the number of electrons that are flowing through the pn junction would increase and as a result the current and this happens when the multiplication factor becomes higher then the current would drastically increase and you will see a characteristics like this at a critical voltage this multiplication would be happening and it would give rise to a sudden change in the current which would make the pn junction to actually conduct a very high current and at the same time these holes will be accelerated in this direction so this phenomenon where an electron gains enough kinetic energy to impact an atom to make it an ion by generating electron hole pair this is called impact ionization and similarly if you see in zener effect basically when electron is actually going from valence band to conduction band this valence electron was actually in a covalent bond as the covalent bond is broken some of the atoms are actually ionized and this process we would call as a field ionization in zener effect now let us see how temperature plays an effect if the breakdown voltage is because of zener effect versus it is because of avalanche effect to show the effect of temperature on both zener and avalanche breakdowns i have just taken the energy band diagrams and i plotted the iv characteristics only in reverse bias showing the breakdown i have drawn it like this to let you know that there is a lot of range in between these two lines so which means this breakdown voltage is higher compared to this one if a diode has breakdown because of zener effect then how is the breakdown voltage going to change with respect to temperature now let's say this graph is for t is equal to t1 now let us see what happens when we increase the temperature let's say to t2 so i'm changing temperature from t1 to t2 so if you see as temperature is increased the electrons would have more energy now because of the thermal energy present as the electrons have more energy the tunneling phenomenon would be even easier which means as temperature increased even if you decrease the voltage it would have been enough to actually cause the breakdown that's why as temperature increases the breakdown voltage as such decreases to represent this let me draw it in a different color we know as temperature increases i not increases this indicates that the magnitude of breakdown voltage has decreased so this is at t is equal to t2 now let us look at temperature effect on avalanche breakdown let's say this characteristics is for temperature of t1 and now let us assume we are increasing temperature from t1 to t2 
and we are fixing the voltage at this point for this pn junction diode where the avalanche breakdown mechanism is actually happening which means at t is equal to t1 the electrons were getting accelerated enough to acquire the kinetic energy to have an impact ionization to generate electron hole pairs and the multiplication factor which indicates how many electron hole pairs on an average were generated by an electron was good enough to actually have a sudden rise in the current flow through the reverse bias pn junction diode now as temperature increases the atoms in the crystal lattice would start vibrating more because of the increase in thermal energy as a result now the electron before it gets accelerated to get the enough kinetic energy the chances of these atoms which are vibrating can disturb this electron as a result it might not acquire enough energy to actually have a good multiplication factor to have this breakdown as temperature increased at the same voltage we might not have breakdown phenomenon in order to have the breakdown phenomenon we need to increase the electric field in the depletion region as a result the electron before getting disturbed by the vibrating atoms it can get enough energy to do an impact ionization to generate electron hole pairs which means we need to increase the magnitude of reverse bias voltage to actually see the breakdown happening again as a result we can say the current curve for t is equal to t2 would be like this where i not would increase as temperature increases and as we said breakdown voltage magnitude would increase so let's say it is somewhere here then it will sharply go down and this is for t is equal to t2 before we wrap up this topic let me make one important point where people have this misconception that breakdown phenomenon is a damaging phenomenon for the pn junction diode in fact it is not it's not the breakdown phenomenon that is damaging to the pn junction diode instead it's the current that is flowing because of the breakdown that damages the diode as for a pn junction diode there would be a limit on how much amount of current can flow in reverse bias condition when this reverse bias diode is used in a circuit if we can make sure that current wouldn't flow more than the specified maximum current then we can pretty much use the diode even in the breakdown region itself and in fact zener diodes which we will see in special diodes are actually used right at the breakdown region 